Okay, in this video we're going to talk about doing some double integrals in polar coordinates, which is a little different from rectangular. Um, so, say we have this rectangular double integral, so it's the traditional thing, so R is the region we're integrating over. We have dA, um, and dA means we could do dx dy, but it also means we could do dy dx, depending on which is easiest or most appropriate, or whatever. Um, so there's kind of a polar equivalent, and um, so that's going to be... Uh, the double integral of f of, so you replace every x that you see with r cosine theta and every y that you see with r sine theta, the same as you would in normal polar coordinates, like two-dimensional polar coordinates. Um, then we have dA again, um, but when you're dealing with polar, dA is a little different. So for rectangular, it's dy dx or dx dy, you know, you pick and you move on. Um, for polar, there's this third uh, component, and so it's r dr d theta. And I'll be honest with you, almost... Uh, probably 99% of the time you actually go in that order, it's dr d theta. But the extra r is by far the most forgotten thing. So you got to remember that. So r times dr d theta. So in all of your integrals, you're going to be multiplying in this extra r. Uh, you're probably going to forget it a couple of times, uh, and that's probably going to cost you. So you don't want to do that. Uh, usually it makes it so that you just can't even do the problem. So you got to go r dr d theta. So let's take a look at an example. So say we want to do the double integral of e to the negative quantity x squared plus y squared um, over some region. So just seeing the x squared plus y squared might make you think of polar because in polar x squared plus y squared is r squared. So already we could kind of simplify it a little bit. Um, e to the negative r squared seems easier. Um, and then the region is the inside of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. So this is kind of perfect. Um, so if we were to graph that, um, this is a, like a perfect polar region where uh, r is between 0 and 1, and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So if we allow for those parameters, then it's going to trace out the entire thing, fill in the region. Um, and now, if you're going to do polar, you need to convert everything, right? So x becomes r cosine, y becomes r sine. Um, but in particular, I know x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So now I'm ready to do all my substitutions and create an equivalent integral, in or double integral, in polar coordinates. So it's going to be 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1, e to the negative r squared, right, because I'm replacing x squared plus y squared with r squared. And then dA that we're using um, contains an r, so it's going to be times r dr d theta. And that r is actually really important here. If it wasn't there, we wouldn't be able to do the integral. Um, and then you would realize, oh, I was supposed to multiply in an r. So it's kind of helpful to uh, just check along the way as you're doing things. Uh, so this is an integral with respect to r first. And so we have r times e to the negative r squared. So we can actually integrate that probably in your head. So it's the integral from 0 to 2 pi of, um, it's going to be, there should have been a 2, or well, negative 2. So it's going to be negative 1 half e to the negative r squared, where r goes from 0 to 1. And you'll notice I'm still writing uh, like such that, and then r equals 0, r equals 1 to, to really fix my mind on what I'm subbing in for, because there could be multiple variables at this point. Um, so if I let... 0 to 2 pi. Uh, if you let r equal 1, you just get negative 1 half e to the negative 1. And then minus, if you let r equal 0, you get uh, negative 1 half. And then e to the 0, but that's just 1. Um, so now we have this, and we want to integrate this with respect to y. At the same time, I'm going to clean it up. So the, this is just a constant, right? So it's going to be the constant times theta. So it's going to be uh, 1 half minus e to the negative 1 theta, and then from 0 to 2 pi. And now if we plug in 2 pi, we end up just getting 2 pi and then all that. So there you go. That's the value of that integral. Um, I'm not even sure. Well, I guess we, mm, I don't know what we would have done in rectangular, but it doesn't matter because it's a perfect polar uh, example. So polar is really the way to go. Let's take a look at another one. Um, so we go 0 to 1. Uh, those are the y bounds. Then we go from y to radical y. Those are the x bounds of radical x squared plus y squared. Um, in rectangular, I'm not really sure how I would approach this, but the x squared plus y squared suggests that I would use polar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the inequalities that the bounds kind of um, are indicating. So we have this, um, that x equals radical y, I'm going to immediately change to y equals x squared. And now I'm going to graph the uh, region. So we have x squared, y equals x squared, we have y equals x, um, so y equals x is definitely theta equals pi over 4. I mean, you can just think that through and get that. y equals x squared is way more annoying. So um, we have y equals x squared. I'm going to replace y with r sine theta. 
and x with r cosine theta. So I get r sine theta equals r cosine theta and then the whole quantity squared. Kind of expand. And then your ultimate goal here is to solve for r. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by, uh, I'm going to divide the right hand side. Well, I'm really dividing everything I see by r times cosine squared. And that gives me r equals sine theta over cosine squared theta. Um, and then sine over cosine is tangent, and 1 over cosine is secant. So r equals secant theta, tan theta. Maybe that's famous. I didn't know that y equals x squared would simplify to that without doing this problem. Um, and I probably won't know it the next time I encounter it, but that's how you uh, convert it. So this is actually r equals secant theta, tan theta. Uh, so I'm going to write down some inequalities. So theta goes from 0 to pi over 4. That's as you rotate from the x-axis to y equals x. That covers the angle of 0 to pi over 4. And um, r is between 0 and secant theta tan theta, which is pretty weird. And then I need to convert the um, integrand as well. So square root of x squared plus y squared is really the square root of r squared, which is technically the absolute value of r, but since r is between 0 and something, r is going to be positive. Um, so we have that. So we can rewrite our integral. So it's 0 to pi over 4. 0 to secant theta, tan theta, um, and then it's going to be r, and then r dr d theta, because you always pick up that extra r, so you don't want to forget that. Um, so this is an integral in terms of only r, so I'm going to integrate right away. So it's r squared, so it's going to be 1 third r cubed. So 0 to pi over 4, 1 third r cubed. r goes from 0 to secant theta, tan theta, d theta. This is about to get really gross. Um, so I'm going to sub in. So 0 to pi over 4, 1 third. Uh, secant cubed tan cubed d theta, and then when you plug in zero, it just goes away. So I have to integrate that. So new page, because this is an annoying integral. Um, so that's what I'm integrating. So what I'm going to do is, I have two odd powers of secant and tan. So I'm going to save a secant and tangent, and then do u substitution on it. So uh, let's watch that happen. So it's one third, I'm going to factor that out, it's just in the way. Zero to pi over four, so secant squared tan squared, and then I'm saving secant theta tan theta d theta, because that's going to be du. So, um, I'm also at this point looking, so if I make u equal secant theta, then du is secant theta tan theta, which means I need to turn this tangent squared into secants. So tan squared, right there, is actually equal to secant squared minus 1 by the Pythagorean identities. And I still have this. I'm like almost done. Uh, now I'm going to do u substitution just to like make this a lot easier. So u is secant theta, du is secant theta tan theta, and then I can change the whole integral into u squared, u squared minus 1, du, and I can integrate that, so that's 1 fifth u to the fifth minus 1 third u cubed um, back to the normal integral. So it's going to be 1 third, 1 fifth secant to the fifth minus 1 third secant cubed, and then from 0 to pi over 4, and this is gross, um, so this is Plug in pi over 4, so the secant of pi over 4 is radical 2, or 2 to the 1 half, which is where I got this, and then minus um, the secant of 0 is 1, so it's minus 1 third times 1 fifth minus 1 third. Awful. Um, and now the question is, did I use a calculator to get this? I don't know, I leave it up to you to decide. Um, but anyway, I ended up with this, um, which is the correct answer. Use a calculator to check. Um, and so that's like a pretty complicated integral, but the polar part of it wasn't so bad. Um, so that's two examples of polar integrals. One pretty easy, one just kind of gross. You end up with a lot of trig functions, so they're almost always kind of gross. Um, but you can do them, and I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.